Hello, welcome to my channel. Um, yes, I will maybe edit the um out. I have noticed. I have always seemed to start with um, right, bad habits. Hello, welcome to my channel. I have Colours of Life, which I'm going to kit up. I, I have received a number of comments saying people are wanting to see how this is going to look. I'm terrified, to be honest. I really am. Between it being a Chuck Pinson and confetti. And it being a kit that is new to me, being Dreamer Designs. I'm a little worried. And another work in progress, which I'm a little wary of. So, I have been informed when I unboxed this, I commented on the glossy paper and thought, what the hell, is there something different about this? And I was told it was a sticker and I have checked. And the back does peel off these. And it is indeed sticky. It's not very sticky, but it's, it's sticky enough. So the plan is to get rid of that. No, I should actually, no, it's all right. Let's get rid of that. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to empty my bin because it's a little bit full of wrapping. And I have a big bag that it all goes into behind me. All right, so I have a bin. I will make some space. The bin goes there. I'll tidy up my workspace just a bit. Yes, that's my fox from the nails. Lillian. Oops, Lillian Fox. I got a fox. Alright, so I will put that there. It's not blocking the camera. Okay, this is a whip and chat. So grab your work. Grab your drink. I have my bucket of tea. This is a huge. This, this you see right there. That's my big, my big mug. I'm actually very tempted to make a mug cozy for it, so it keeps my tea hot that little bit longer. All right. Now these stickers have the numbers, the symbols, and the DMC code. What I will do because there is no way that that line is going to fit across the top. In fact the strip is barely going to fit with just that so I'm going to trim it all right let's do this in lots of 20 and I will show you my crazy plan let me move this aside because I'm going to need a flat surface I have a trimmer from my scrapbooking days. These are amazing, amazing things. All right, so I need to get my straight edge. Now, there is a bit of a gap between the numbers. Oops, help if I took the guard off. There's a bit of a gap between the numbers, but I um, now moved it and it's up against the line. I don't want to take off the number, but I don't want to have dead space that's no good to me. So I'll trim that and I will flip it and trim it. Sorry, I'm trying to think how I'm going to make this work in the best way possible so I'm, you know, nutting out what will fit on the top and how it will position and everything else. Yeah, that's much better. Now it's still too big for the top. So now I make the choice of cutting by scissors, which is fiddly as all hell, or Let's do it this way. Well, let's actually do it this way. Oh my god, that fox is going to be the death of me on this kit. 
um, project. All right, so grab your work. Look, you don't have to necessarily pay full attention. That's not going to do what I want it to do. It's not enough grip on the magnet. So let's try it this way. Okay, so I'm using tools to position. I'm using the tweezers and that's it. It's cut, okay? And then I'll grab it with the tweezers, pull it to the next. And slice. Okay. Maybe I'm a bit like you, you know, ye old chimpanzee. Oh, come on, get off. Using tools, or a raven even using tools. So use the tools you have if you have them. Uh, like I said, I could use scissors. No, that's. There we go. The tweezers was get were, the tweezers were getting in the way. All right, I'm hoping this will make it somewhat speedier. Um, I use the tweezers because nails get in the way, and why not? I've got the tools. They've come with a multitude of kits, and I benefit from them. So if you have other craft stuff hanging around that you think is useful, use it. This is not diamond painting exclusive, um, or anything like that. Um, Half of the stuff that we get from AliExpress um, for cleaning drills is some kind of herb press. Um, you know, things get repurposed and rebadged even. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to repurpose things. Um, cover minders are needle minders, um, as I heard Stitcherista saying this morning you know she can't get out of the habit of calling them needle minders because that's where they've come from from cross stitching they're just you know magnets with um a different purpose and that's what these kind of things i'm talking about these are cover minders needle minders i could use this on my cross stitch just as easily as i do using them on my covers if i even get into the habit of actually using them depending on what the cover is so um, please, just um, don't be afraid of repurposing items to make your life easier. These, for instance, are pill dispensers. It's a seven day pill dispenser, morning, afternoon, evening. Um, you know, it was a dollar fifty or something each. If I had bought that as a diamond painting gadget it probably would have cost four or five dollars you know don't be taken in by names you know um you don't have to necessarily go all out and buy brand stuff okay now this potentially Could have me coming undone. Now there's 52 colours in this, so I've got to keep an eye that I've got all 52 and don't lose them. That would be pretty disastrous. So I'm going to do these 20 at a time just to keep a handle on things and keep things manageable. All right. Okay, pop that to one side, get my tools out of the way, save my fingers, put the spares up there and keep these safe. Okay, all right, now let's see. Okay, these are in number order, which is handy. 
but they're not necessarily coming out the way I want them to. So let's see if I can find 1, 2, 20. That's 52, that's even worse. <laughs> Where's the middle? Well, we're not even the middle. I want... Gosh, it's like bingo. 40! I think they were in rows of like 20. What's this? 48. Still too high. So these must be. Okay. 4 to 9. 26 too high. 18. Here we go. Alright. Keep a tidy workspace. Things might fall behind me. Okay. That is 10 to 18. One. Alright. So, what I want to do. There is my handy funnel. Go away. Go. Go. Not now. Right. Funnel. These can be a bit sticky, so um, use them wisely. You may get a bit of static, so have your dryer sheets handy if you need them. These funnels are under a dollar. They're AliExpress. They're collapsible funnels. They're awesome. Really, really handy as one of those gadgets that may or may not have a diamond painting purpose. And the funnel keeps on collapsing. All right. So, I feel like I have no space whatsoever. Let me move some stuff. Now, to make these, I wasn't going to say work, let's move these aside. So I want to look for, well, I could look for 1 to 20, seeing as the drills are all in 1 to 20. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these over. So I can see the numbers. All right, don't have to be in any particular order. I just need to look for that number on the left to be able to pick up the right container number and kind of go from there. All right, hope you're with me. Okie dokie, where is number one? They have a leading zero. They have a leading zero and I must be looking at it thinking I'm looking at 10. No, there's 10. This is a good start. There we go. Alright, so one is here. Again, tweezers because my nails are a pain in the butt for this kind of fiddly stuff. We do the sticker first so we know where it's going. Um, tweezers to get the curl of the edge. Again, nails pain in the butt. Get it started at least, I hope, if this is a sticker as it's purported to be. Ah, there it is. Right. Okay. So get that film off the back and try not to rip the page as you so gosh this is fiddly as all hell okay so the film is off the back you probably can't even yeah, you see a bit of the shine it's staticky I need to get off oh, that will be interesting because that's not wanting to play the game I think I got rid of it I don't see it okay now I want some of this to stick separately. So I'm going to hold that very gingerly and while that's not sticking properly I'm going to lift it and move it. And then I'm going to position this with the tweezers in the centre. There is an overlap and hey presto we have a labelled container. 
Okay. Then I take the lid off, stick the thing on the top. I don't tear these bags. I don't trust that those dotted lines are not going to rip into the next bag and I'm not ready for the next bag. So I will cut the corner off and I will drop that. Try and get my fingers out of the scissors and just drop them in. I could drop them straight into the jar, but this, I guess, leaves for a little bit of imprecision. Just tap that down. They might be a little bit unwilling to get in. A bit more of a tap. I've got one stray in there. And that's it. Okay. Jar filled. 154. All done. Nice, neat. I don't have sticky on my fingers or anything else. This is my sticky tweezers, if you're wondering. Now, I'm looking for two. Again, if I can get this off and if I can get it off with the tweezers, I'm not going to have that static fight. So let's see. It's a really, really thin layer on the back of this. There's... And when I get going, I'll be able to kind of fill you in on how things are going. Let's hold that. Let's get rid of the static. No, it's still staticky to the tweezers. Right. Um... I could put a bit of dryer sheet in there. Mm, might work. I'll see how I go. All right, I can hold that just above where I'm wanting to snip because I need it just to fall on it. That's in a good position. Tons of space for the double side by side. I don't think there's any need to pull whatever's on the top off it. I think that would actually tear the paper and that's it, right? So that's two. Lid off next to it, two. Double check, 208 is the next bag. Snip. There's not many in this. Absolutely no issues with that fitting in. And again, I mean, it, look, it could fit just because I've got that nice angle, but this just gives me a bigger mouth to fill. Tap them in and, you know, there you go. Simple. Okay. All right. I will try and just keep going with these. I'm going to try multitasking. My husband said it's not possible. Not possible to do well, I think is, is more the point. All right. Um, where are we up to? It's, um, believe it or not, Easter is over. It's the end of April. Um, it will actually, it's, it's past the middle. It's the 18th of April today. I record on a Saturday usually. Oh, these things are going to be the death of me. Um, there. Possibly. Uh, flick straight down. Horrible. Okay, that came off easily. That's good. It's a start. Alright, so uh, work was uh, a short week this week. That will need repositioning because it's gone way off. Work is a short week. Uh, Monday was off. Uh, Tuesday was a light day from a staff point of view and it was just myself and a few colleagues in the office. So um, that was interesting. We didn't... I tend to avoid the mixing with people at the moment. Um, the lunchroom uh, doesn't freak me out, but having so many people so casual together is like, mm, yeah, I'll pass. And then Thursday we had a meeting and it was like, oh, um, you're talking about 20, poss 20 people, give or take, all in the same room. It's not a tiny room, but 
Um, yeah, we were all in the same room, but social distancing actually happened this time around, so that was a little bit more kind of comfortable. I happened to be on a call though when the initial call came through, so I was late in, so I was standing by the door, but yeah, it is what it is. I still made it to the meeting. Um, so yeah, worked, uh, got my new desk installed, that's a sit-stand desk, so I had to um, spend Wednesday morning stripping my old desk of all my junk, um, getting it dismantled. Um, one of my colleagues actually helped me with that, so that was really nice, because and he's the one with the bad back too. Um, yeah. But he helped me, you know, dismantle the thing with my multi-tool because the option would have been waiting for some other numbnut colleague who promised his drill on another occasion and it never eventuated and it was just like, you know what, screw you. I'm sick of waiting for you. I am. I need to get this moved. So, yeah, did it myself. So anyway, had the help. Got the desk dismantled. We completely flattened my L-shaped desk this time around. Um, there are some really spiky bits on these containers. I'm not liking those. Um, flattened the desk, slid each of the bits out and put them into a spare storage space. Um, I don't know. 20 minutes later, after having my desk dismantled, got the call to say my people were downstairs with my new desk. And my biggest fear was where are we going to put them in the lift? We have a couple of lifts in the building and well, they're fine for people. <laughs> they're not necessarily fine for uh, two meter kind of length desks so had a look in the first lift and went i don't think you're going to fit in this one but let's just you know see as we're walking through no we're not going to fit okay go and get the rest of the stuff i'll i'll wait here with this bit of the desk they go back to the van get all the mechanical bits to go into the desk as well they bring that in we go to the it's not really a freight lift but it seems like a freight lift um and we went to that lift and everything fitted in and I was like, oh, phew, thank God. And then got them into the the area that um, I needed them to get into, close the fire doors because that's a security thing. And um, yeah, made the way to the office and it was like, cool, right. And left them to it. Um, had the desk assembled in, you know, reasonably quick fashion. They forgot my um, anti-fatigue mat. That was a minor thing. Um, that got delivered to me, I think, half an hour later after they'd gone. And a, another workmate um, handed that to me. So that was handy. And um, yeah, I'm sorted. And then I tried rearranging all my furniture. A lot of it had to go just because there was nowhere to put it. Um, got myself kind of situated. I think I have my desk semi set up. I'm now waiting on a mechanical keyboard that we've ordered because I have um, an inkling that it may be the mechanical, key it may be the current keyboard, which is, I think it's slightly smaller than it should be. My mechanical keyboard here is a beast. Um, it's really, really big. And I think what I could be doing is now using my left hand, because you actually type, when you touch type, you type more with your left hand than you do with your right. Um, so I think what I've been doing is overcompensating and then overreaching. And because it's a tiny keyboard, I'm kind of twisting and that's what's making my left arm hurt. Now, these might not fit. This is pretty, pretty full. Let's see, here we go. Um, oh, got there. It's up to the brim. All right. That is chocas. Not much space there. And there is a second bag. Okay. Autumn leaves. So 
that one. Gets put in there. Uh, actually, I will not put it in there because that's a bit of a a loose, and don't want them going loose. So I will put it into one of my smaller is it block storage bags. I got 100 of these. Oh, lordy, I'm not having much luck. I got a hundred of the large bags that I use for storage and I got a hundred, so these bags here, right? I think it's, uh, what is it? It's 23 by 27, something like that. They're heavy duty Ziploc bags, got them by the hundreds. They arrived in about a week. And then I also got these, which are 16. Whoa, drill. Um, so 16 by 20 something, that's a brown. Okay, straight drills, right. Um, these were just um, purchased off uh, a Ziploc storage bag kind of store. No biggie. Let me just tweak my screen just a smidge so that you can maybe get a better overall kind of just zoomed you out a little bit um all right so yeah bought the heavy duty bags and um they are my kit kind of storage bags i can give them a bit of a squish and they kind of keep the air out where did you come from you look black I don't, don't, you're not a purple, and I haven't had a black, right, that could be from one of the other kits I was doing last week, and maybe it was just stuck in the tray, anyway, all right, moving on, um, so yeah, my desk is installed, um, have been using this, the, I've been actually setting myself up um, in the morning so that I come into work and start standing. Um, the desk is up and has been up from, I don't know, maybe the last half hour at the end of the day, you know, running around doing files, writing things up and, and that kind of thing. Um, we have cleaners who come in and they empty the bins. So I kind of shove the chair out of the way, leave open access to the bin, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I like leaving my workplace reasonably neat. I don't think I cared on Friday. I was late leaving work, leaving where, you know, my other work area. So I just kind of dropped and ran on Friday afternoon. Oh, you... Sorry, that noise is my husband doing some light fixings in the kitchen it's the impact driver but I will get to a bit more of that later <laughs> yeah that um clear cover for the back of the sticky is a pain in the behind that's too long on me all right I'm I'm gonna spit it in a minute I think I'm gonna get a handy dandy tool which we should all have in our uh, stuff let me fill you in in just a second this is a six get it the right way around it's not a 90 all right and that on top the reason why I'm keeping the numbers on is because then I know what order they go back on into the tub into the um, storage bag. And then I know if I'm missing some. And I also know if Sophie's been fiddling. Oops, not ready. Too busy talking. All right. So uh, yeah, this, the desk is in. I had gone across the street a couple of times during the week and really noted <laughs> the little amount of traffic on the streets 
whereas normally Hobart's, you know, reasonably busy, certainly at the hours that I was out around. Um, oh, Corbyn appeal, stop it. These would be naughty. They might be getting a bit staticky from the funnel. So please be careful when you do use other tools. I find using a vacuum static your drills straight away. So if you have a spill, you need to have your dryer sheets, which are here. Now, these are my dryer sheets. Holy cow, they stink but I'm going to cut a strip off, okay? Just that, I'm going to drop it in the bin, okay? And I'm hoping having that is going to get those little flyaway bits of the backing to, um, to just sit in the bin when I get it off. That's the plan anyway. Um, just trying to think where I've actually put my canvas for this. It should be in my, well, it doesn't really have a choice. It will be in my storage for all of my kits and it should be reasonably easy to get to. All right, a um, couple of things. Uh, I spoke with most of my kids today, yesterday, I mean, where did that? Seriously, I'll put it back down. God. Spoke with most of my kids yesterday. Um, one, oh, see, it's stuck onto the fabric. Awesome. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. All right, so, um, yeah, so my kids have um, been, uh, two of my kids have been stood down while we're under this hoo-ha with work like retail stores just aren't operating so one was in retail in a store that's part of the cotton on group in Australia um, they do a number of different stores so she's in retail there and um, her job is secure they will take her back but she's not entitled to job keeper which is what the government were trying to put a lot of employees onto JobKeeper basically means that the job, that sorry, the company um, is getting a subsidy, I think, or something just to say, hey, keep your employees and we're going to help you do so. So she's not entitled to the money, but she is certainly secure in her job, which is really, really cool. Um, but I asked her if she wanted the diamond painting I got for her, Trixie, and she said yes. So I will get that to her and see how she goes with that. She is bored, she said. She's on her own in her house sharing. She's got her cat and she just wants to have her own space um, and all of that kind of thing, which is fine. Um, she's, tw she's 20 this year. She's independent. She has been for way longer than she should have been but she is and um, I'm kind of happy that she'll give it a go she might not like it and that's okay but if she is willing to give it a go that's all kinds of cool that came off much quicker all right awesome cool liking that all right so um, my other son as soon as the coronavirus um, got crazy he um, had lost some hours in a burger joint and he got hours instead in a upmarket grocery store near where he lives. So he's walking distance to work and he's got a job. He's doing well. My middle boy up in Sydney is in naval architecture and unfortunately he finished his project and he has been stood down. So he is at home and he is bored. He's only had three days at home. 
he he's the one who had the open heart surgery last year like this time last year um he has ridden 300 kilometers in the last week i know he's insane he um he's looking for some projects so we were kind of brainstorming last night what kind of things he could do and making suggestions for him of what tools he could buy and he may or may not get going on one or any of the ideas that we gave him so hopefully he's not going to be continuing to say he's bored he's pretty much a can-do kind of guy he's very practical very pragmatic um and unfortunately probably a little bit harsh on himself too kind of saying uh oh, there's no way i'm going to be able to do that unfortunately i don't he hasn't got a mentor up there that he can kind of go to and in the current light of not being able to go to people um he would suffer anyway but i have said look there's youtube go to youtube you know look up your videos of how to do woodwork and how to what tools to get that kind of thing so i'm hoping he will find something he made an ikea coffee table the other week and i think his fiance was kind of like uh yeah not too impressed which is very harsh ikea is not necessarily the easiest i love doing flat packs and all that kind of crap that's just me i'm a space reasoning kind of chick and he's space reasoning anyway he's he's all into the math and all that kind of thing so yeah hopefully he will find something to occupy him and then he can teach the kid homeschool and all that kind of thing because his fiance needs to go back to work and she's a teacher so he will be busy when all of that kind of thing happens uh 10 um what else is happening um what else is happening i have leave coming up i actually had an email from one of the supervisors saying hey you have uh to check your balance for your um time off your toil card as we call them um it's a time off in lieu of overtime work or whatever we earn a day a month anyway and i haven't taken any for ages and ages so i actually have over a week's worth of toil that i could take but i have got two weeks leave coming up so that's on the 18th of may hanging out for that i'm definitely taking this leave i didn't take the last leave so yeah that's that plan these up and get on with the next color um sophie let me tell you about sophie sophie has discovered um the coffee table now in the coffee table we store our goodies the adult goodies the adult biscuits and treats and chocolates and Ah, oh, sorry, itchy nose. Um, yes, and my husband happened to have a bottle, uh, not a bottle, uh, a bag of honeycomb chocolate in there, which was unsealed. So it had been opened and he had been nibbling at it. And it wasn't one of those bags that he had gotten around to finishing. So this open bag has been sitting in the coffee table and you know she spies it when the drawer is opened on those kind of occasions that the drawer is opened it's not very often and she has this morning managed to haul open this drawer which is not a small feat she's nine kilos of grit tenacity and everything else she is one feisty little chick so she's pulled the drawer open we actually watched her doing it later on but she came down the hall to me this morning with two fistfuls of honeycomb chocolate in her hands chocolate all over the place and i'm thinking oh good god 
Right. She's got into this. Came out and there was no sign that she had been in the drawer. So the sneaky little thing is opening the drawer, taking the contraband, and then closing the damn thing again. She even took her tablet um, to uh, go play. So it's an Android tablet that we have only just got her because she had a hissy fit the other week and threw it on the ground and cracked the screen and broke the touch mechanism on the screen. So yeah, we got her this child baby tablet and um, yeah, so she got into that and she took that and then she went back and she got some honeycomb and it was like, okay, you're going to go share that with daddy. And she walks past the kitchen. Oh no, actually what she did was she walked down the hall with, you know, two pieces of honeycomb in her hand and then she tucked them behind her back and, you know, made like she had nothing. Cheeky as all hell, this kid. Yeah. Um, have finally gotten around to making the bed that's in her room um, with her. So put the pretty sheets on, made the doona nice and flat. Yeah, we call them doonas here, um, duvet quilt whatever bedding that goes in a pocket cover um anyway this th i used to call them a quilt in duvet in ireland um duna in australia don't quite know where the word duna came from maybe down uh, i really don't know don't even know where the word duvet comes from so Whoops, that's not a 12, that is an 11. I've gone and got the wrong bag. This is 11. Right, it's 400, so talking and need to be careful. Um, so yeah, the, um, the bed is all made up, thrown the bean bag up onto the bed and the girls have been sitting down there and reading to each other and just hanging out on the bed today so that's pretty cool um this morning because it's saturday our um team building couples therapy uh the job that we chose we we could we had two jobs that we could have picked from and the job that we chose today to start with i started with the washing up because hubby was playing with the printer so I started with the washing up which meant that that kind of eliminated being able to work on the kitchen job so we were going to install lights over the kitchen uh, sink and that meant that we could get started in the toilet instead now oops, the toilet project was installing a shelf over the door and the shelf over the door stores our toilet roll and other toilet products so it's got the flushable wipes it's got the spray and it will probably have the toilet cleaning solution as well it's on top of the door which is i don't know six foot tall it's human height it's you want whatever the standard meterage is for a door and it's over the doorway it's got 3d printed brackets for the shelf it's cobbled together kind of what is it mdf kind of chipboardy coated stuff um so that's been installed now and i was the well my husband calls me the sexy assistant which is all kinds of flattering but yeah anyway i sat there while he was drilling into tiles uh, squirting water onto the drill to stop it getting too hot. Yeah, I know. It's glamorous work that I'm doing here for us. So that was my job. Uh, that is a red, I think that's a 321. Um, before that, he was drilling into the plaster. He 3D printed the wall plugs. Like, he's all kinds of handy. Um, this has been a project that's been in the works for a number of months. We've had the bits bought for ages and ages and it didn't get done because I think he was after a particular kind of plastic to print because he's going, oh no, PVC, PLA, whatever it is, is hydroscopic, which means that it soaks up water and a toilet 
area is wet and I'm kind of thinking I plastic is plastic yeah no so he was being very um, methodical as usual wanting to do the right job no you weren't being difficult dear he did suggest that we paint the brackets I don't think we've painted these brackets these brackets have been painted sorry these brackets have been painted so that will protect the plastic we put in the wall plugs and then we kind of thought oh crap that we thought the screw was going to be too short it worked we heated the wall plugs in the kitchen in the bathroom sink so that they were a little bit more flexible and we have this handy dandy shelf and if I can remember I will put a picture in here um, at the 45 minute mark uh, showing you our handy dandy shelf that's in the bathroom with our um, toilet paper and other toilet items um, we have got more toilet paper than we might ordinarily because we couldn't get our double rolls like normal because Australia went into meltdown as well and all the toilet paper flew out the doors so we have singles um, and we have our sprays which we usually buy once every couple of weeks when it's on special or we buy lots when they are on special um, and we also installed which was the scary bit for him we also installed a flushable wipe holder so it's basically um, uh, the soft packet of wipes cage and it will hold the flushable wipes under the toilet roll. I know it's nothing overly fancy it's purple in an otherwise white and I don't know, graphite floor um, but white walls and graphite floor in the um, toilet and we now have the flushable wipes on the wall I know it's weird things like that anyway the kitchen project was brackets I think he's fiddling with doing some kind of lighting system there as well it's up he says um, I was getting a bit worried about him overdoing it um, drilling into the tiles he says is scary as all hell because you don't want to break expensive tiles and they're big tiles and we had to drill five holes into this so we started off with I don't know half size drill holes and I was spraying the water and we've you know sprayed water all over the toilet so that had to get soaked up and all of this kind of stuff and then there's plaster all over the place that needs a bit of a tidy but in general we got the job done so that was our marriage counseling and you, like he's sitting there and he's going yes but it's time for me to squirt the water on the drill to keep it cool um yeah so it was finally coordinated he was sitting on um a step stool and i ended up um getting a chair out of sophie's room for me to sit on because you know i'm old and decrepit <laughs> um and was getting sore standing there with the spray bottle <laughs> squirt yeah and bored so then I ended up um, my phone was going nuts or my watch was going nuts with um, Mrs Coffee's live which is scheduled on a Saturday morning and I went and got my speakers and put one in and was listening to that while we were working so that was kind of good because we weren't really chatting hubby and I he was concentrating he was sore and I didn't want him um, getting even more sore by prolonging job but it was almost like surgery as he was asking for you know a screw and a plug and you know it's kind of like the doctor being handed the um the medical implement so yeah it was an interesting morning um so that's what we got up to in couples therapy this morning we're still talking to each other <laughs> uh now, who was I listening to? I was listening to Stitcherista this morning. But I don't know if it was her that was saying it. It might be somebody else. Um, and it was about their interaction with their spouse and how at like three weeks in, 
you know, they're fit to kill their partner. And, um, yeah, I had a year off work with Sophie. Um, and the hubby and I got on just fine. Not a problem. I um, actually loved having the time with them. Um, yeah, we, we just seem to potter along. I mean, I'm over here, I'm doing this. He's over on the other side of the lounge and he's doing his wiring stuff. And we can chat when I'm not recording. Well, he, he chats anyway when I am recording, to be honest. But we can chat when I'm not recording. The TV can happen if it needs to. Um, we have actually put a TV up in the kids' room, in the older kids' room. I'm not 100% happy with that. I've never had TVs in kids' rooms before. But it kind of gets us free from watching Octonauts 24-7, which is Sophie's latest obsession. Um, not that we let her get too obsessed. There is a stray. I think that's that one. So, um... It just gives us a bit of a break. I will watch Bluey, but Octonauts, uh, we're all out of Octonauts and I'm kind of done. Um, Bluey I would watch again and again and again. Bluey's just the business. My husband's sick of Bluey because he gets it all day as well. So he's probably seen it way more than I have. Anyway, and then we've, because we've got the 10 year old home from school um, and here all the time, she's just as you know stuck on things so she'll watch movies or whatever so um, trying to give them something different to do is right up there yeah i've been really mean i've been giving her jobs like moving gravel um we have our deck balcony um off the kitchen lounge off the west side no off the east side of the house um and the the job is not finished because i don't know parents and contractors and crap like that anyway it's supposed to be have patio kind of tiles down the bottom of the stairs and it's not um it's they've been pulled up so there's a bigger gap than there should be and it's been driving me nutty more and more so I've got the kid to, well, I actually had a soggy bit of ground at the front where I get the water for the pet, for the cats from. And I got her to move some of the gravel down to fill that boggy patch. So I'm standing on gravel now, so I don't bring um, mud in. So no, it wasn't my first idea. I don't know what my first idea was, but anyway, my husband suggested the bluestone. Oh, I think I was going to go out and buy gravel. And he goes, hell no. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so he sent me going up to the top of the driveway where there had been a whole delivery of blue metal ages and ages ago. And it had all been kind of flattened down. But it was, you know, still a substantial amount of blue metal up there. So he reckoned that that could be used. So put the kid to task, told her that she'd need three or four buckets. And she did it in a blink of an eye. Um... And then we gave her the task of moving the gravel down to the bottom of the house. So that wasn't going to work with plastic buckets because blue metal is heavy and the bucket would have fallen to pieces and she wouldn't have been able to carry it. So the suggestion was she puts the bucket into the wheelbarrow. She fills the bucket at some point. She trottles down the street. I'm hoping this will fit. It's going to be quite tight. Let's see, here we go. Um, she trundles down the street, then she carries the bucket to the bottom of the steps, and then she dumps the blue metal, which is not pebble, so it's coarse, and the edges kind of lock into each other. Um, it's a road-based kind of material. So she was to dump this at the bottom of the step and build up the area so that it wasn't quite as steep a drop. She didn't quite follow instructions as usual. Um, but it's a downside better than it was and I had to send her out to do more today because she had not done enough she'd actually leveled it all out the other day to the point where it was ineffectual in what I wanted her to do now I've got too many 
And this is what we're going to do. There's some stray bits. Okay. Alright. We're going to put the lid on. And we're going to let it bed in. This is like sugar, salt, and we'll see if we can squeeze these last few drills in. I'm noticing tiny, tiny little flakes of plastic from the containers, and it's not a biggie, they'll come out in the wash eventually. Alright, and see, look, it squeezes in, lid goes on, and there is still a little bit of room, there is ever so much of a gap, but it fits. Alright, spare bag has gone in there now. 19 and 20 is on a new row. Uh, no, it's on this one. And this is the very next colour, 581. The last one was 580 in that muddy green. That's even bigger. I don't think this is going to fit. So, what I will do is think, 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 where my smaller Ziploc bags are. And they're in one of these tubs. Now, this is where I keep all my spare gear. And I want a middle kind of size. Probably a little bit too small. These bags are not bad. They've got holes on the top, but I want to keep them kind of the same. Uh, look, they probably will do. No, these would be potentially better. E mini mo. Let's go with these ones. No, 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 we won't. We'll go with the, the smaller ones. Okay. I think these came with Dreamer Designs as spare bags for the kit. I get bags from all sorts of places. There's usually never enough bags, but I do remember getting a butt ton of bags with this kit. Whether or not they're the, kit, the bags, it really is immaterial. I'm not going to be using many of them. And you will see how I do these in just a second. Um, now, where was I up to? I have to do my nails. I got nail files this week to be able to take off the acrylic. No, go away. Right, that'd be the feed dog alarm. Um, I have to file off a couple of nails, I uh, put on my wraps, that's a job in itself. Um, what else have I been doing? I've been doing black work, I finished all the squares on my black work, and I started doing the border. I will share a photo, if I can remember, around about the hour mark. I'm not going to tip all of these in because I think I'm at my limit. And because I'm so close to it, I'm not even going to try squeezing it up to the very top. Alright, oops, I will put that into the jar. So I fold it over, that immediately seals the bag effectively. And then I'll fold that in and then I will put it into the Ziploc bag, tuck it in, and that then is my spare, and we'll go into the spares 
collection. All right. I'm going to get this one and tip that in. No, not on. Right. There we go. All right. And 20, and then I'll have to cut some more of these. So we'll see how I go. This is going to take... Well, that's only 10. At least I've got my technique down at this stage. Whether or not I keep you with me for 52, oh, that could be another hour. Um, we'll see how we go. My back is beginning to get a bit tight. I meant to take pain, kill, pain pills earlier and I forgot when I came and sat down. More fool me, because now it's getting to the evening dose. This is a very light bag, this one. That's the printer. We're hanging out for our Prusa to get built. I think my husband's expecting that to get built next month and shipped. Provided anyone is shipping. Um, that's the next COVID dilemma is um, are the companies shipping? Oh, yeah, my back is um, it's not so happy. So now I'm, I'm at the hour mark. I'm going to stop. I'm going to continue kitting up at a later date and I will let you guys go. Um, I will go and sit on the couch and lean into something that's a bit more comfortable than this. It's been a bit of a day because, um, as I said, we've been working doing bathroom stuff and, yeah, I've been really taxed in squirting water at a drill. But, yeah, beside the point, I'm, I'm, I'm knowing my limits and, yeah. Hello, I'm back. Um, I'm just trying to get myself set up. Um, I will need that and I may need my phone, phone doobalaki. Alright, um, ooh. I've pre-cut the next lot of labels. I'm going to pop this one out. So my funnel's ready to go, my bag's there. And we are looking now for 21 onwards. I still haven't fished out. There we go. The canvas. That's okay. I know where it is, but um, I forgot to show you this yesterday. Excuse my light going crazy, wobbling. Um, I received this, um, you may recall, uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, I put my old girl down and um, I got a card in the mail. Um, from the vet clinic saying extending our deepest sympathies for you at this time of loss but may fond memories of your beloved astrophy warm your heart always kind regards the team at Montrose Vet Centre um, I'm not a patient my pets have not been patients for this clinic and to the only time I've ever been to this clinic is actually to give them a dead cat to dispose of um, Tango who died in his sleep and to go and have asked for euthanized and that completely blew me away I was, it was just a beautiful touch a really really beautiful touch uh, what else do I need I need my scissors all right um, not much has happened from yesterday so um, I'm just really uh, I guess getting up to speed I stopped Doing what I was doing because my back was getting sore, it was me setting my limits, knowing where I was at, and um, I think we all need to do that. I have had a few conversations with people um, about how we're doing, and you know, it's it's been fairly innocuous. Uh, one thing that is um, 
um, um, um, what's the word, uh, prevalent in my mind, that's it, prevalent, is the fact that I want to do um, an actual COVID chat, like a specific, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room kind of conversation. <laughs> My biggest issue is finding a time slot. Um, for me, it's Saturday night, Eastern Standard Time is a reasonably good time slot, but everyone um, that I watch on my Sunday morning is also live at that time. So I'm kind of stuck um, with how and when and yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, it's, it's not that it's not going to happen. It's just a case of when. Um, what I also need, just using my nail file to get rid of a sharp bit on that. Um, what I also need to think about is, goodness, there's another one. Okay, I'm going to keep the nail file out and handy. Is my potential co-hosts, if I have any, their availability. They do their own lives on the weekend. Um, you know, that kind of logistic and it's like, oh, okay. So I'm not quite sure when it's going to happen. I need to send out some emails and that kind of thing. But if you watch this and you have um, pointers or you have people or you have ideas, please share them with me. Um, because I don't want it to just be a one-sided conversation, not not this one. Um, the plan is not to talk about politics. It's not to talk about necessarily who's doing what right or wrong from the point of view of um, judgment. It's sharing how you're coping emotionally I think more than anything else um, and just trying to be measured in how that's done I thought I was seeing double I thought that color was going to be the exact same that's not brain um so that's kind of where I'm thinking kind of where I'm heading um, I am aware it's a bit of a political minefield because it's affecting so many different elements in our lives. Um, and there is an awful lot on the internet if you're watching. If you're not watching and you're avoiding it, you know, um, maybe you can give some insights as to what you're doing to be pragmatic about it. Um, how are you dealing with, with things? So yeah, um, ideas, brainstorm. Um, that's kind of what I'm after right now and it look if it doesn't happen in you know two weeks it doesn't need to happen I think we're in this for the longer term but I would like it to happen I think within two weeks I don't want to keep putting it off because it's um you know I think there can be positives out of how we deal with it there is a friend of mine who has um She's struggling because she's a photographer of mushrooms and, well, most, mostly mushrooms. She photographs mushrooms, fungi in the wild, toadstools even, because they're not actually mushrooms. I don't know. But she does some awesome photography. But you're talking minute. She actually showed um, the size of these little things. And they're like, you know, three, five mil tall. Um, you know, you're talking the size of a drill and she's taking macro photographs of these mushrooms, toadstools and other fun things. I think she's done bugs as well before. She was doing spiders or maybe she did spiders once just because she found them. Well, at the moment, what she's hunting for is glow-in-the-dark mushrooms. She found some the other day. Apparently, what the, the toadstools do is the gills glow-in-the-dark 
and as they mature the mushroom turns upside down so that the f it's like an upside down umbrella and the spores can then be released but the uh, so she showed me somebody else's photo of this and it was like that's really cool and she's a bit kind of down because she can't go or she feels she can't go and take the photos well our state's got restrictions it, but it says you can exercise and our state has got provisions that you can you know do things for your mental health because they don't want their people breaking so I kind of said well it's exercise and it's mental health she ended up taking um, a Valium I think to um, venture outside last night to go and take photos I was like oh dear you poor girl because I think she is fretting but she's going into the middle of nothing to take these photographs in the wilderness where there is no people but yeah um, so it's it's hard it's taking its toll and um, yeah people will break if they don't get these outlets now this bag is going to be too big so okay. I may have thrown in too much. We'll see how we go. There we go. Get off. Um, now, if you haven't had a chance and you have one of many, many, many of these amazing diamond painting pens, I'm going to show you one in just a second. So hang on. Let me just get this folded and popped into the bag. I watched Daniel from Lays and Lathe Works. He was doing a live this morning and he was making um, a pen for his dad with a bolt action um, bullet because he's a vet, was a vet. Um, 24, 24, 24. He was also making a pen for diamond painting, a four bump. This is one of Daniel's pens, so he does four bumps. And there was 15 of us in the live watching him create these pens on the lathe. It was amazing to watch. Um, this is something that to a certain extent we might take for granted. The craftsmanship that people do. Um, he started out in his career of lathe work doing um, pens. I think he also did some other things with the wood lathe but he started doing pens and then diamond painting pens became popular and he was saying he's down to maybe doing two pens a week and the rest is diamond painting pens and he's got some new tools he's got some new bit um bit pieces for the machinery and he has created tools to ho house that bit so he's got these big long handles so he can balance and all of that kind of stuff and it was really really cool watching him create he made it look easy to be honest but he said he's been doing this for years now and it has taken you know quite a bit of time to get where he's getting but he made this gorgeous gift for his dad and uh, yeah we were part of you know just the chat um, and things like that so I think while we have got stay at home time um, go and check out some of our amazing creators um, Dan Weeks put some photos up of his he got three new Enderpro uh, printers or Ender 3 Pros, um, I think they are. Um, he has a very pretty room, actually. Um, my husband was saying he wouldn't give his printers a view. But he's got a very pretty room with these um, Georgian bay windows. And yeah, he um, has his... Uh, I'm not sure what number he's up to. He's, I didn't count. He's probably up to about 15, 20 printers where he is printing our um, trays 
you know. And uh, Dan is very, very popular in the whole, you know, industry of um, giving us our diamond painting trays. Um, we have Archers Art, um, who Archers have just been printing. They've actually slowed down to doing only the colour of the month tray. And they've been printing um, mask shields from Prusa because they have Prusa machines. Um, now, 3D printing might not be your thing, but oh, yay. Um, the Prusa machines, we're getting one of those. We actually have got an Ender 3 and we're getting a Prusa machine. Uh, how am I going to do this? Oh my golly. All right. Let me do that and do this so that this doesn't fall over. Okay. All right. This is my go-to. A damp finger. Not a wet finger. A damp finger. Because otherwise my fingers are just too damn dry. I know, you get the joys of now seeing me mop up. Lovely. And they just rub off then. A few of these skittering around. Um, so yeah, having um, an insight into what our creators do, I think is really important. I think it's good for us to see. It's kind of like knowing where your food is grown, made or whatever, um, isn't it? So yeah, um, you know, get alongside some of our creators and um, see um, what they do. So yeah, some of it's not all on um, YouTube. Some of it is. There's an awful lot of online services coming out these days. You know, um, get familiar with it. I'm looking at more and more black work patterns. I bought a pattern the other day from Peppermint Purple, which I will show when I do a floss tube. Well, not the pattern, but you know what I mean, the picture. Um, it's Arland. And there was a bit of debate. She did it correctly. There was a bit of debate, though, whether or not the teddy bear should have its head. Because Ireland technically is the teddy bear without its head. But it's so wrong without its head. So she's included Northern Ireland um, in her final pattern. Which I think is really, really cool that she listened. Um, and she, she whipped this up in, I don't know, half an hour it felt like. Um, and she's churning out patterns just at a huge rate, like faster than I can craft. And she does the stitch along with the black work. And at the moment I'm puddling along doing my border on that. That's what's keeping me occupied um, away from the desk um, currently. So, yeah, um, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm going to get this kitted up and I'm going to lay the first set of drills. Um, I'm really not going to know how this is going to work until I get them down. The, um, the mock-up... I wasn't overly impressed with. I thought the colouring of the deer was all kinds of wrong. I've looked at mock-ups that Diamond Art Club do just because they usually have Chuck Pinson. So, <coughs> excuse me, I feel like I've just inhaled a drill. Um, so, um, there's, yeah, there is reservation. I have a lot of reservation at how good Dreamer Designs are going to do of this. Um, I really, really hope that at some point Diamond Art Club will reproduce some of what Dreamer Designs brought out. Not to 
rub their noses in it, but to do it justice for Chuck Pinson. Um, we'll have to wait and see, I guess, with that there. I don't think, not yet. Uh, way too far out. I think this one might be next. And we got an AB in this. No, nope, that's 51. What? No, okay. There we go. We ready? Right, okay. I'm trying not to scatter these as well. That would be horrible. Uh, 26 is done, up to 27. I've moved my scissors, but that's okay. All right. Um, so yeah, I've, um, that's the, the plan. I actually don't know if I've got an art tube. I think I do. I think I've got a tube that I can store the um, diamond painting in while it's being worked on with my other projects in between. Uh, I'm so jealous of you guys who actually do have lockdowns <laughs> that you get time to craft. I still have to do work. Which is good, don't get me wrong, but it's not giving me crafting time. <laughs> uh, the two weeks leave that I've got coming up in May, yeah, I think I'll set aside maybe an hour or so each day and really do some blitzing. Um, that would be really kind of cool because I should also be up to date with my yeah I'll definitely be up to date with um, the peppermint purple stitch along oh my gosh I had a coffee this morning maybe I need more don't tell my husband he doesn't like me having coffee not that he doesn't like me having coffee he reckons it's not as good for me as I seem to think it is. I'm so unprepared for this one. I have got a tea to the side. I will grab that in a second. Um, see, so yeah, I will be up to date with the peppermint purple. I will have the border finished. Oh, I reckon within a week. Um, I really, really want to start on my cunning cross stitch. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm way, way, way behind on that. It's cross stitch, which is going to take longer than black work. Black work works up so quickly. It's beautiful. Um, so uh, yeah, I really need to kick my butt into gear with that one. Not that there's a, a race necessarily. And some people are getting the drops and they've clearly got nothing to do because they're finished like the next day. It's like, what the hell? You know? But we are seeing some really, really amazing creations coming out of this. Um, some people, so the cunning cross stitch, if I can think of it at, you know, round about this time. Um, if I think about it, I'll try and put a picture in of where we're up to. Um, the, what we're doing is, um, there's an owl. And then I think it's Hogwarts, and then I think this is the train, and then there's another owl. And then below that is a row of the wand, sorry, not the wands, the swirls of all the colours of the houses. There's your wand, and then underneath is all the chapters that Stuart is designing. In there, all in the letters. And then down the bottom is all of the letters in en envelopes. envelopes. This is also going to be too big. And... Some people have, instead of putting the patterned owl onto the design, they've put um, Hedwig, who's Harry's. Uh, some people have modified their wands. Some people have modified the castle, Hogwarts um, castle. Um, some people have completely modified the banner with their house color. Um, Rachel has gone so far off track with her absolutely cute he is cute as all hell her Slytherin snake I wish there was an equivalent with Gryffindor but I haven't found one on Etsy yet 
Um, but yeah, I'd nearly stitch her Slytherin snake just because it's so darn cute. He's gorgeous and I'm not a Slytherin, so I can't. Um, so there's all these inspiring changes being made because we're meant to be able to tweak it to make it our own and well you're gonna hit some people potentially like me who stitch what they see some people are putting howlers in the letters so all the letters originally i think were all white some people have made the big letter the big envelope um red to be a howler and um, you know little things like that that we're kind of saying oh this is quite normal um so I love that inspiration, but by the time I get to the end, I really want to be started. Um, you nasty thing. So that's the plan um, with the cunning cross stitch. I need to start getting it going. I have learned from some people's mistakes. Uh, don't do the paler colors of the chapter borders first. If you've got a pale, oh, you, I've gone and stuck it in, <laughs> I'm pulling out a whole heap of these stupid staticky bits, dear, uh, oops, and there's one, Get off. I might need to empty my bin. All right, so yeah, um, the lighter colours have made it very hard then for people to be able to navigate where the rest of the work goes, or they've been really hard to see because they're against the white Ada. Um, so yeah, I don't want to do that issue. But then I also have Misty's fabric, which is the funky colour in, I think it's called Mystery is the colour of the fabric, whether it's because it was a mystery or that's just what she's colored it. Um, she didn't know what she was coloring, I don't know. Either way, these are purpose built um, fabric colors for the stitch along. So they're supposed to complement the colors in the pattern. I don't know if she has seen a sneak peek or if she's just done a floss toss to see what the potential colors need to look like against the um, the fabric. I don't know. I came along quite late to, well not quite late, I came along to the um, project I think in October or November, ordered the floss and ordered the fabric and the fabric took an age just because shipping from the States and then the floss got here and all I'd ordered with the floss was actually um, the first no, what did I do? I think I ordered the mandatories and then needed to go back and order more of the occasionals. Um, I was using Itchy Stitchy initially. I have found a cheaper store that sells the DMC and I may change to that for the occasionals, um, depending on what postage is. We'll see how we go. I, I kind of like how Itchy Stitchy gives you the option of plastic free packaging. So, um, yeah, it's a nice touch. Um, are you finding uh, more things available for you online though? Um, I, I know shipping is a pain at the moment. Um, and it kind of makes me reluctant to purchase off um, Ali or even some of the US people um, because there's not so many flights and things are just not progressing even though you've ordered. Hang on a second while I empty. Oops, the bin. I'm not quite Stop sure. It. Stop it. Alright. Nice empty bin. I don't know what's going on in the kitchen. I don't know how much you can hear. Sophie has been 
plumbing the bunk bed this morning. Um, she's been up and down and up and down and she's been getting the big sister to read to her pretty much all morning. Which is good because the big sister's reading is poor to middling. Um, so it's good to hear her reading out loud, good to hear where she's maybe bad, but she's getting the words, she's just struggling I think to get them, but I think she's got the background concept of how to do it now, at least. She's 10 and I feel like she's got the reading age much, much younger. The next challenge, she's reading Warriors, Warrior Cats at the moment and the next challenge is for her to start reading Harry Potter. She isn't reading for pleasure per se. She doesn't pick up the book voluntarily and read. But she does read for Sophie so uh, we may get her up to speed. But I don't know. I don't know if it's the gap between her and my kids. My kids are now nearly 20. So I don't know, 10 years ago was my daughter in the same position? I feel like she wasn't. I don't know. I know she was, this one is bad because she was taken out of school for such long periods and then homework wasn't done. And yeah, there's a care factor zero. And then the back and forth between shared care was horrific and stress and yeah, it's um, not done any favours for either mental health or education. So I'm hoping we get an improvement, we see an improvement with where we get to with the quarantine to a certain extent. I know I push her to task when I did find her reading to be as poor. I'm actually going to end up pouring these back in. Yeah, I think that will fit. Uh, yeah, we, I drilled her in her reading. She was getting it morning, afternoon and evening. She was having to do her sight words and her um, level increased. She, yeah, I was so impressed with her then. But uh, it hasn't continued. Um, by her age, I was reading, um, and I was in boarding school actually at her age. So yeah, different life, I suppose, for me. Uh, yeah. And only one of my kids wasn't a reader when they were little. So it's trying to get them to read something that they were interested. That was the the kicker. Um, got that and they did okay but the others would read and go through books so keeping them in stories was my thing um, but I keep trying to encourage her you know um, reading is a skill that gives you a whole new world it's not just games on the computer it's a whole new world open up to you when you can read um, your imagination can fire and yeah it just nothing can stop you if you can read I think um, and the literacy rate in Tasmania is quite poor in some circumstances teachers are 
um, at a disadvantage because of some of the attitudes. You know, when they kind of go, oh, well, you know, they're from a disadvantaged house or they're, you know, our term is bogan. Redneck might be the equivalent term. Um, Aboriginal is one of the bandied hang-ups. You know, if you're Aboriginal, you're already disadvantaged. And I think that's a load of crap. Um, in Tasmania, anyway, if you're um, Outback Australia, yes, there's definitely different family setups, but not in Tasmania. Tasmania, you're pretty much just the same as any other family. Some of your neighbourhoods might not be the best, but you still have all the services. Um, yes, there's a certain amount of milking the system that I see, which gets a bit frustrating. But that's as far as I'm going to go with that one. And I've seen many, many who don't want to do that. See it all the time in work. But then you get the others who will use it and abuse it. start making my lunches again. I've been really naughty. I had been making um, Caesar salad lunches and then I stopped which means that I don't have a lunch pre-made when I go to work which means that I eat things that I probably shouldn't do. And why is it, and I don't know if this is the same in the States, why is it that the cheapest food to buy is actually the crappest? It's the takeaway, you know, burgers and chips and everything else yet if I wanted to eat healthy out it's you know ten twelve dollars whereas the equivalent filling food is three four dollars it's insane we have one client I know of who has um, he's got a trust fund he's like he's managed by the government and they have a food account in the local um, takeaway shop like in Ireland it'd be a chip shop um, here it's it's just called a takeaway and um, yeah so that's what his food options are you know the takeaway stuff is like yeah that's not necessarily the best diet for somebody who's homeless and not looking after themselves hey. mentally but that's what they do um, yeah I think it's a bit silly no, I'm really, really close to the limit. No, you're not. No. What's wrong, Sophie? No. No? She's after my chocolate. But it's lunchtime and she won't eat if I give her something. She probably won't eat anyway. It drives me bonkers. She'll eat her fruit pouches, not a problem, but when you give her a sandwich, she'll faff around. No, 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 down, down. And she gets me worried because she's so little. No! Out! Out, out, go! No! Have you got a sore bum? No! Stink! Is it stinky? No! Yeah, go and tell daddy it's stinky. Marcus! She's dirty and she's sore, so don't make it worse.
when she's good, she's great. But when she turns her brain off and stops listening and thinks she knows better, the 10 year old I'm talking about, not Sophie, it can be a world of hurt for everyone. Anywho, next line. Oh, I had a moment of panic there. I was looking at the bag going, I've just put 34 out as a spare bag on a second roll. Right. Panic over. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking of answering some more kind of tag-like questions. Let's try just pouring it straight in. It's only a small amount. Um, I haven't picked them up yet, as you'll notice, because I'm just kind of rambling. And hopefully you're kind of good with that. Uh, uh, brain. Jar. I was kind of thinking of homeschooling and was going to ask the question of, how are you coping with your homeschooling? I know um, Mrs. Coffey sounds like it's interesting and her schooling actually sounds quite well set up with the fact that the kids go online and have class together. I don't know how our schooling is going to go. They're still on their Easter break here. Um, so I don't know what's happening when schools go back what they're expecting but the little snippet that I saw when they had kind of switched off just before Easter was um, projects that uh, you know it was like research projects and I'm kind of thinking these are for 10 year olds what the heck uh, she would need you know nearly 100% supervision and I'm kind of thinking, this is not, ouch, oot, age appropriate. So I'm hoping the stuff that when they go back is a little bit better organized. The teachers are back on Monday to do that. They're going to be setting it up. I think they're going to be sending out links. Um, and then Tuesday, school starts again. So I need to have some kind of plan of what the kid's going to do during the day. Before the Easter break, she was doing some English writing. She, It was based on what she says she was given in class before. So um, I was giving her lined paper and I was getting her to write a story and I was giving her three topics, three words to write about, and then three or four words to find other words for. So let me give you an example. So I would write um, boy, cat, uh, wand. That was what she had to write about. And then I would give her other words that she needed to find other words for and include them in the story. So it might have been uh, tired, um, castle and grass. And she would have to, you know, build the story with that kind of thing. And now her spelling is appalling and we haven't concentrated on the spelling just yet. I did give her some underlined words from one of her previous stories and said, fix these, find the right words, but we'll see how we go. No, not. She's after the TV. Her word for the. Well, no. Her word for the TV is TV. Her word for what she wants on the TV is not, which is octonaut or knock, I think is what she's actually saying. But it's octonaut. Um, which is great, except I'm sick of the octonaut. Shh, don't tell her. I'll watch Bluey. My husband won't. My husband's over Bluey. Um, the big kid is making pizza, so that's coming out of the oven now. I'm not going to get this all done before I wrap up. 
unless I keep recording and speed through the last bits and then I don't know, catch it at the end, maybe. I don't know. I might give you something to listen to. Yet. Um, oh, we watched a movie last night. What? Um, Sonic. We watched Sonic, Sonic last night. That was really cool. Um, my kids have played Sonic, I think, once, maybe twice, that I've watched them. Never really understood the game, but the movie was all kinds of cute. It was James Marsden, again, um, doing the acting with no actor, because um, he did EB with the um, Easter Bunny, where he did the acting with no actor. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's a nice actor. I like him. Um, yeah, this is a cool little family movie. Uh, so yeah, I think I will zoom through, catch up with you at the end, say goodbye. I was just thinking of what kind of song I could get to play. Um, while I do this, whether it's a, a freebie or something, because I'm not monetized, I can get away with putting some songs down and all they do is a copyright claim and they may put advertising on. Um, sorry, just trying to fish a stray back into the bin. So you may have a fun song coming up. I'll have a think. Um, I know there are playlists out there of the um, kind of pandemic songs, you know, like um, I Think We're Alone Now. Um, you know, silly kind of plays on words. Thank you. You might see me eating on camera. As I say, I'll fast forward. I may even edit that bit out, snip it out, so I can eat. And I'll keep going. Get to 40. Okay, we finished on 40. finished and I'll talk to the camera while well, I'm not multitasking because you know we don't do that so well bags of 40. They don't look terribly full though. I think this one will fit. Yeah, interesting. I think they could have filled the bags a bit hot bigger. Enjoy the song. See you soon. Mm. 
All right, I wasn't expecting to record, but I've just kitted up um, the full kit. I'm going to add this into the kitting up video. Um, it's a clear cover, and when I went to start trying to find my drills, I'm going, okay, I'm looking for, I think it's a half moon, a flat half moon. That was the symbol I needed. I was looking then for what I thought was a crescent moon. It turns out to be a chevron. Oh, I forgot to get the pill. The pill is 40. Um, so the pill is not actually the pill, it's actually got sharp points on each end. The X is a blurry thing. Uh, this purple half and half, that's number one. This thing is, there's only a couple of these. It looks orange on the canvas, and it's supposed to be that square. I think I've got the right one. Um, there's a blurry, I think it's an L. 18, I didn't get that one out. L. So symbols on these are fine. The symbols on this, yeah. There's a egg timer on the side. That, that's blurry as all but Jesus. Uh, let me take a picture, and I will post it for you. This is with my light pad on. get this to stay out of the way. Actually, let me see if I can do this. So you can see my camera shot is in focus because I'm focused the, um, the top of the Number here was in focus and you can see how blurry or not the canvas is. Um, okay, so the first impressions, this is not an easy canvas to work on. I'm looking at it and there isn't this sense of pleasure that I'm going to know what drills to go for properly. Um, there isn't, yeah, I'm... Okay, initially I'm disillusioned. I need to keep that one aside because I want to know what I'm working on. There is some tabs on that. Uh, brown, one of the browns I put down has a tab. I can see another one on its back <clears throat> with a little tab. And the... canvas squares don't seem to be very very big like it fits but we'll see how we go with a bigger section completed it's too soon to tell if we're going to get well we shouldn't get popping drills because it's poured glue and things will kind of shuffle around and move and it it's kind of like a breathing living canvas instead of the um tape so there may be a bit of give in between these drills rather than gaps uh, they're lining up okay <clears throat> starting off a square canvas always seems to uh, frighten people because you're not working on a guide or a straight line or anything else checkerboard is the way to go if you 
are nervous, I have been able to place reasonably straight up until now. So please give it a go if squares are not your thing, but make sure if you do that you get good squares. Um, every moment up until now have been the best squares I've ever done. I had done a cat canvas before that and it was a nightmare that was popping drills. There were tabs, there were chunks, there were everything going wrong that did go wrong. And moving on to an ever moment square canvas was just a dream. So please, please, please make sure if you're going to do square drills that you are kind of picky with where you go. Um, Diamond Art Club are good. Um, certainly have heard good reports from them. I'm going to try the dreaded multiplacer. Well, they're going down okay, so that's good, but the finish, not the finish, the the fabric, I've forgotten how horrible it was when I packed it away, it um, has that weird kind of surface feel, like vinyl. I would any other square drills. It's not, you know, uh, competition just yet. As I say, you don't know whether the squares fit until you've kind of got a section done. blue allows you to slide better than the tape does. So from that point of view, working with the port blue is a pleasure. Pleasantly surprised, although okay. 
couple of big um, patterns repeat. Um, so there's I think it's two X's, but one's black on yellow, and the other one is brown with a white X. The brown with the white X is what I'm currently working on, so they're distinctly different. Hopefully, they remain distinctly different and easy enough to work with. Certainly looking into this area here, there the moon, um, kind of moon cakes, and um, yeah, they're fuzzy. They're certainly not crisp and easy on the eye, and this is with a light pad. is the canvas that they're printing on just is not going to allow for crisp printing. I don't quite know why this fabric was chosen. Tin Me Arts, I think, or Diamond Dots use similar. No, Tin Me use a flop. Um, Diamond Dots use similar. I haven't worked on my Diamond Dots, but I didn't think they were blurry. I might have to revisit that one as well. I know I compared when I unboxed this, I did compare the canvas with Diamond Dots. I found the canvas that it reminded me of. But I don't know if I compared the drill... Oh, sorry, not the drill. The, the, well, the drill field with it. This is a five placer that I'm using. I find that the five placer is a nice middle ground for these. I'm feeling like I have to work harder with these than I would ordinarily do. big issue is if I was endorsing this like we've seen Natalia endorse this and she's a diamond painter she's got quite a few viewers um, I would be coming down drill field is blurred and it shouldn't happen on a 2.0. I think they'd have got it right. If you're going to recreate your company, you're not going to recreate the same issues. Unless of course it wasn't an issue before and now it's an issue. Alright, I'm going to give that colour a rest. because 
that's blurry as all hell. Alright, they're sitting there, they're behaving. The drills in the tray look good. Um, I'm not seeing tabs on these. These are lighter colours. Whether that is making the difference, I don't know. made of my um, sunset view and the drills are not all even there that was a stitch diamond conversion of a picture of mine and yet yeah, the drills put me off going back to that one I have uh, Victorian moon yeah, that's not necessarily a fun one to do either. Um, the only one that has been something to look forward to has been Diamond Art Club and Ever Moment. So. Kua Can, I struggled and struggled and didn't want to do it. Sectioned it all off as had been done and just kept slogging away until it was done and yeah, I'm happy not to see a hook hand again. I've got popping drills. They were down, they're lifting. Interesting. I think they're square bottomed. Hideous chevron, which isn't a chevron. Anyway. Oh, I did notice the wrong colour in there. This is dark green. Wherever that should come from. Spot it again. Uh, some tabs on these.
think I'm putting these on the right symbol. not quite the same as on the canvas, which is fine. So I'm hoping these deer are less gaudy orange than they seem to be, but the mock-up picture is giving me zero confidence at how it's going to look. Um, you have seen from my unboxing video, please go back and check it. If I can remember, I will try and put it into the eye here. Um, linking my unboxing video where you can see um, the comparison with the original Chuck Pinson and the Dreamer Designs mock-up. I don't know if these are hand charted or if these are computer generated. If it was computer generated, something is way off. If these are hand charted, I don't know what their artistic background is, but they should look at something. The colour is not similar. In their mock up at any rate. And that's what you'd be expecting this is going to finally look like. check that there isn't another colour that it could be. Alright, 34 is what it's meant to be. And it looks a cross between a muddy green and a brown. Alright, there is no other crescent moon that it could possibly be. eyesight's wrong. That makes any sense. I swear these ones are different from each other. It's like they, there isn't a point on the chevron. It's more like a curve. Let me see if I can photograph it. So what I'm going to point to is here. They're meant to be a pointy chevron. I'll, I will Try and insert that picture in the right spot. But yeah, I'm going to have been uh, potentially talking a little and speed, speeding up other bits. I apologise if this bit is weird from the point of view of maybe chat, no chat. Uh, it's not my intention. I'm trying to um, get some drills down, see if it starts to come together. Um, yeah, I'm just, um, looking at this going, uh, this is weird. 
but it's okay. Look, I don't care if the symbols behind them doesn't match um, color. That's fine. That's not a problem for me, particularly on a square, because you won't see any background with the square. If it was round, that would be a problem, because your colors wouldn't be there in the background. So it's not a deal breaker having a different color background. Now one thing I did find even skin on canvas will um, take the sticky away so don't rest your arm on your canvas if you can help it. Or you will find you have old spots, effectively. All right, I've finished this corner. Um, one thing I have found. There are symbols that are similar to each other that you wouldn't expect. Let me show you these two. When these are next to each other, on this blurry canvas, they are a bugger to try and differentiate. Same with these two. When they're printed badly, they're really poor. Now the colors are really similar to each other. These are 580 and 581. These are not the same numbers, but they are similar in tone. There's a dark gray and a light gray. So I don't know if I'm putting the drills in the right spot. It is what it is. They're going down. Um, but yeah it's hard work with the green drills and with the gray drills some of these are really easy to tell apart and might be fine but some of them not so easy i'm done on this um done on this for the day it's going into an empty cotard tube that i've got did i did you see that yeah um that's just the lid um yeah it, anyway it's going into a tube and it's going away my one regret, depending on how I go with this, I've gone and kitted that up into a really good storage bag. I should have, I didn't know what to expect. I should have kitted this up into Ziploc bags. One regret. Um, because now it's clogging up a storage bag, which means that I'm going to have to fight to do this. And yeah, not fun. All right. Bye.